Hello everyone, just Gorn here and welcome back to another episode of Peeling the Bakes of Bergen. And today we're going to be looking at a bunch of little things that I've been doing around the park. Uh, well, little and not so little as well. Um, just to give you guys a bit of an update before I'm going to be leaving for uh, one or two weeks once again. I've just gotten back from camping and uh, I'm already off uh, to go do some other holiday stuff. But... Um, yeah, just to give you guys something while I'm away, here is this little video and let's get started right away. And the first thing that you'll notice is that we have some uh, kudus walking around and these aren't actually supposed to be kudus. Uh, the kudus are a modded animal, of course, uh, where we're jumping back in the molds. I know in the last episode, oops, in the last episode I said that I wasn't gonna use any mods until we've kind of finished the park, but there were a couple of new mods that kind of pushed me across the edge. So I've got all the model animals that we used to have back in, at least all the ones that are updated for version 1.6, uh, as well as a bunch of new mods. So we'll be looking at all of those today. Uh, and yeah, here are the kudus. Uh, they are also in this little area over here. And these aren't supposed to be kudus, is what I was saying earlier. These are the common elands, but uh, yeah because we don't have those, uh, the kudus are a nice replacement. Now something else we can see over here, which is not as exciting, uh, but it's exciting for me. Uh, this little pond over here, we earlier saw a rhino kind of rolling around in a mud pool in there. And, well, I'll be darned, it's back. Uh, I, for a moment yesterday, this, you can see this, this reflection over here of the mud pool. That wasn't there yesterday. But the bug seems to have returned. So that is a bit of a bummer. Damn it, I was going to be all proud and showing you guys off that it worked. But it doesn't. Uh, for some reason... Well, let's talk about that instead then. Instead of talking about that it's fixed. Yeah, for some reason this pool over here, the reflections are just completely bugged. Over there... In that pool, there's also a mud bath, and that one is completely fine. But yeah, we, if we just leave Tajikam, you can see over here this mud pool. Even if I lower it down, the reflection is just completely bugged. And that's kind of the same for any other things. You can see the reflection of this water buffalo, or what are, what are they called? Uh, yeah, all reflections are just completely broken for this specific pool. This pool is fine. So I really don't know what's up with that. And I don't know why it was fixed yesterday, but it broke. I updated my graphics drivers today, so that might have something to do with it, but weird. Well, I guess I'll just uh, delete the mud pool again. That's a real bummer. Yeah. Well, anyway, moving further along, uh, there's some small foliage updates that I've been doing around the park adding bushes like this and we'll see some other stuff in a moment uh, but yeah mainly this big old bush was missing from the flamingo habitat over here also a bunch of nettle and stuff like that growing on here uh, so this is just a small little improvement same thing over here i added a bunch more folias in this chimp habitat which is pretty freaking lush during the summer and i added more of those similar kind of bushes in the back there uh, which are kind of overgrowing the climbing frame. Hello, guests. Uh, and something we can already see in the back, which if you saw the live stream of the Yak Peninsula, uh, you're not, maybe not as surprised by it, but I have started making the shores of the zoo, of the um, boat safari lake thing. So if you just go down here, we get a nice look of the Yak Peninsula, and you can see the shores are made out of the mud um, pillars, mud, mud walls, what are they called? The faux rock tree trunks. That's what they're made out of. And they're meant to represent mud walls. Hello, brain. Have you caught up? Okay, good. So this is a technique that's been very popular on the Pronation server recently um, because of a person, I think it was Mario19, who kind of popularized it among all the members there. Um, I kind of mainly took my inspiration from Haribo. He also made a kind of faux mud wall using uh, faux rock pieces like this uh, in his Misola Zoo build. Oh, wait. I messed up the weather. Um, 
And I, I kind of base this more off of that than anything else. Um, but it's, yeah, it's whatever trick works, right? I kind of did it very differently than other people have been doing it anyway, mainly to save on pieces. Uh, most people who do this trick kind of have uh, all their pillars straight down. Most people have all their pillars uh, straight up or straight down like this, uh, but I also have a bunch of kind of horizontal ones. Uh, just uh, save on pieces because there's a lot of this stuff around the shore uh, so I don't want to have too many logs used for that um, but yeah on this side of the chimps is kind of where I first oops uh, tested it out so if we just kind of go along here uh, you've got a bit of a look at what that looks like and yeah the zoo just has all these sandy areas Completely overgrown. Here I used a different kind of root, but on the other side I started to use the um, Scots pine tree stump thing and its roots, which look a lot better. And yeah, really happy with how this turned out. So the Yak Peninsula is mostly done. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it for now, although I'm not 100% sure how accurate it is uh, compared to real life because it's really hard to kind of pinpoint and copy over a big chunk of nature like that because that's pretty much what this is it's just nature with a feeder here and there uh, one of the things I did copy over oh it's actually being filled up right now but I don't think the bison can actually use it um, but yeah one of the feeders has this little uh, roof on top of it so that's what I recreated using the arbor wood to make it look a bit weathered and stuff like that works really well. Uh, our yaks of course are bison because there is no yak mod or yak in game so we're just using the bison which look fine and sometimes you actually see them uh, walking along the shore here. I actually got a little recording of that for you guys. I've kind of made the island in such a way that the yaks can't uh, cross it at every point so if they want to get from one point to the other they actually have to walk around the shore here uh, because I put some elephant grass into the ground and that's just to make sure that they walk there every now and then because it looks really cool uh, from the walking route to see the X over there uh, I'm just gonna call them X even though they're rising uh, oh yeah here you can see it a little bit so they can and do walk along the shore and this one's actually gonna show it really well so I'm just gonna pause and look at that from the walking route so yeah you can see over here they walk along there which is really really cool really happy with uh, how that all turned out so yeah that is pretty much it for the yaks um, over on that side you can kind of see the sand changes color a little bit and changes back and there the sandbanks turn into like more of a regular sloped shore and the reason the bison don't escape is because we have escapes turned off and it's something that I've been doing uh, in a lot of places around the zoo uh, now uh, just using little barriers to make sure that they only walk as far as I want them to and there's a couple of other animals uh, we'll see where I've really made heavy use of that um, which is a modded animal that we actually saw earlier I saw one swim by but I oh yeah you can kind of see it in the back there we'll get we'll get a better look at it in a different habitat I'm sure uh, let's continue walking though because on this side, this peninsula, we have the yak. But on the other side here, there's a different animal. And it's actually the, uh, the mod I mentioned that kind of pushed me over the edge to get all the modded animals back in. Uh, because as I was building all of these peninsulas, uh, it just so happened that a mod a lot of people have been waiting for for a very long time uh, finally released. And it is the black buck. Uh, made by Leaf and Jen, or Bubbly Wums on the uh, Nexus, I think. Um, and yeah, we can see these are the females, uh, because on this peninsula, at least at the moment, uh, they're not breeding with the black buck, or the um, Indian antelope, I think they're called, in uh, as well, or in at least in Dutch, it's the, uh, the Indian antelope, but then with Dutch words of course um, but yeah the female look really really good and the male look 
even better. And oh, we can see another modeled animal over there made by Bongo Hardwood. This is the Canadian goose. Um, <clears throat> I noticed the past summer that the zoo is absolutely littered with geese. So um, when we finally got a goose mod, that was actually a species of goose that lives in the Netherlands, um, even though they're kind of an invasive species coming all the way from Canada. Um, I was super happy to put a bunch of goose around, so we'll be seeing those dollar around as well. Um, but yeah, a cool comparison between the Indian antelope or the black buck um, peninsula and the Yak Peninsula is that the Yak Peninsula is completely barren, even along the coast. Uh, the Yak eat pretty much every plant, uh, but here with the Indian antelope there is a couple of plants around and uh, it looks a bit better. What are you doing here? That is not supposed to be there. Let me just get rid of that. Um, I'll talk about <laughs> what that was for in a bit. Um, actually, we can do that right around now because you can see over here, we got ducks. That is amazing. Uh, in the background, you can also see the uh, Bactrian Camel and Przewalski's horse. This is their habitat. And even though we're not gonna build the habitat or the car safari that goes through it as of yet, I thought it was a nice backdrop for the time being. Uh, and on there, actually, while we're on the topic of the black buck, I also put two black buck uh, because they are normally in the habitat kind of back here. Look at that goose. Beautiful. Um, but they can kind of climb through the fences and they can also be seen on this field pretty frequently. So let's hop down. And as we hop up on the camel plains, uh, let's look for the black buck. See, seems to kind of hurt together because Pretty much every time I've seen them, they've, they've been together. So that's actually really cool. Um, oh my god, the camel are loud. Um, so yeah, here's the black buck and just look at that amazing model. That's just looping. Loop, looping? Wow. And <laughs> looking absolutely fantastic with the spiraled horns and everything. So yeah, super happy with that mod and uh, stuff. <laughs> so the duck, ducks, yes ducks um, are not the only animal here and we can actually see one being transported because they keep escaping um, I, I finally made the plunge so to say and I put some seals in the actual lake now I think it's time we leave Tajikam for a moment so I can actually show you guys what went into getting these guys in here so um, there's a couple of considerations that had to be made especially for the ducks because they're a little bit more complicated the seals tend to stay in the water a little bit um, or at least they have more trouble getting out of the water um, than the ducks but what I did is I put a habitat gate over here I hit one on the ground I made sure that the slope of this place is uh, enough that the animals were actually able to walk off of it uh, into the water and that's kind of it so this is basically a water only habitat except that they can get over here which we just have to ignore <clears throat> and yeah the seals can get all the way up to here i can give them all the space that they want uh, which i probably will do um, as we get further into the zoo but for now i thought this was fine i was also a little bit afraid that the more space i gave them the more um laggy it would be like the more intensive it would be on on the game so i thought okay let's start with this and we can always expand it um another reason i didn't expand it is because of the ducks and i'll explain why so we have escaping disabled so you'd think You'd, can, you'd be able to just make a habitat and they won't get out of it. But there's a little problem uh, with that, which I'll demonstrate over here. Say you made a null habitat and you made it in a U shape, which is not uncommon. Uh, say you want to have whatever sort of area in the middle and you want to have a U shape habitat around that. Uh, for your animals to kind of walk through. Uh, I actually had this. Uh, I tried to do this with the yak um, because I wanted the yak to kind of stay to the outer 
side of the habitat and not the middle. So the problem that I had when I did this is that even though we have escaping disabled, uh, if a yak would want to walk from over here to over there, uh, it would just do so. Um, and it would not count it as escaped, probably because it's not trying to escape, it's just trying to walk to another point in this habitat. It's taking the shortest route possible, um, which it can do because this is still traversable, even though it's not part of its habitat. So uh, it does that. So that's not a way to prevent the animals from staying out of an area like this. So with the ducks, it's kind of a bigger issue uh, because the ducks only look good on in the water. Uh, if a duck goes on land, which I'll show you if we can find one. Where's a duck? Here's a duck. If a duck goes on land, it looks, it's floating basically. Let's, let's just put it over here real quick. So yeah, here you'll see floating duck, not great. And now the duck, ducks are programmed to kind of spend most of their time in the water. So this duck will make its way to the water in a bit and it won't bother us anymore. Ooh, we can see one of the seals over there. It's really, really cool. And yes, they deep dive. They have enough water for it. Thank God. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, since the, the ducks are programmed to stay in the water most of the time, but if they decide to swim, say this is all water and this is land, uh, if they decide to go from over here to over there, they will take the shortest path across the land. So for the ducks, you do have to make sure that there's no way for them to get out, basically. So yeah, I hope that makes sense. Um, if it doesn't, don't worry about it. This is probably not something that you would ever want to wanna do, because uh, it's really just me trying to keep animals in a certain spot and just make it all look as good as I can. Um, okay, seal's already going back into the water. Uh, but yeah, just look at those ducks. It's just such a nice addition to the scenery. And just having this entire area finally kind of finished is starting to look really, really good. I'm really happy with all of this. Um, so yeah, only the edge of Africa really remains habitat-wise, which is really, really cool. Um, so, what else have I been doing? Uh, there's a couple more things I want to show. A couple more duck spots. Du duck spots? What? <laughs> duck spots, mud spots. Uh, so let's keep walking through here. My god, the frame rate is absolutely tanking. So as we uh, leave the Congo area, we've got a new mod, uh, which is the black and white roughed lemur. And you can see them over there. They're doing a little dance, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Um, this is actually not the right species. Uh, the, apparently, I didn't know there were this many species of lemurs, but there's tons of them. And the ones that they have at the zoo is the white belted black and white rough lemur, which is a whole big mouthful. Um, but yeah, this there there will be a black and white a white belted black and white rough lemur mod in the future. And once there is, we will definitely update it. But uh, for the time being, we'll make do with these. <clears throat> and there's also a bunch more ducks in here, which again have a little hidden habitat gate back in the bushes over there and are able to walk through the bushes into the water and as far as I know uh, they're not able to get onto the lemur islands or at least they don't. Uh, this is kind of where I discovered the issue with the ducks um, that yeah they kept walking over this lemur island to get from back there to in the front here. So that's when I had to kind of, I, I adjusted the shape of the habitat and I added some elephant grass in the shore of the islands uh, in the hope that the ducks don't get on. And ever since I did that, I haven't seen them on the island anymore. So I hope that did the trick. But yeah, as we move along, we're going to get two, uh, two new mods, which is really cool. Uh, the Sitatunga mod sadly has not been updated for 1.6 as of yet, so we have to wait uh, on that. But if we go into here, 
Um, we can see nothing. Where are the animals? Wait, let's uh, let's walk around a bit. Hello. Oh, I heard one. Here they are. I uh, kind of have to get down. Oh boy. All right, let's get out of Tetra Chem then. Let's make it a little bit easier to see these. And we've got the Asian small clawed otter. Finally, the correct species of otter in here. The North, River, North American River otter worked fine, but uh, this little sidestepping fella is ever so slightly better. And there's actually two Asian small clawed otter mods out there. One is by, uh, once again, by Jen and Leaf. And the other one is made by Druv. Um, I prefer this one, which I'm sorry, Druv. Uh, it's just kind of bad luck that, like, if Jen makes a mod of the same animal as you have, then you're probably just out of luck. Jen is just so amazing at making these mods. But um, yeah, I, I'm really sorry, Druv. Um, uh, but we also have by Leaf. The um, sloth bears, finally the right species of bear. And yeah, I, I broke my rule of uh, always keeping a non-modded animal in an enclosure. I don't care anymore. Just download the mods if you want to experience the animals of the zoo. And if not, just download the light edition anyway. <laughs> I'm putting in so many animals now um, that I actually kind of have to maybe look out a little bit because Especially with all the ducks and stuff, I've been putting a lot of animals in. But uh, yeah, let's keep going because there's one more spot where I want to show some stuff. And that is kind of the most intricate little barrier work I've done in the game, possibly. I don't know. Um, when it comes to keeping animals in the spot at least, certainly. Oh yeah, wait, over here there's also a bunch of extra foliage added. Nothing, nothing too fancy. Um, just crossed my mind that that was there. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. So over here, uh, we once again have some ducks, which sadly are, they can get onto the land here. Um, so I kind of have to either figure out some ways to prevent that or just get rid of the ducks here. I'm not quite sure yet what I want to do. I don't know why this duck is just kind of standing there. Um, are you broken, duck? Let's see if that fixes it. Um, but yeah, we've got the Canadian geese. This is kind of my favorite habitat to have them in. Uh, as well as the, the ducks, the mallard duck. Yeah, I definitely want to do something about them because I'm not happy with how they're currently behaving. Uh, but the main thing that is kind of special about this habitat now is that we've got the giraffe field habitat, which you can see over here. Uh, the barriers going all the way around and also right along the shore to prevent all the animals from swimming because I don't like it when my sable antelope are swimming because they don't really do that in real life. Um, and you can see I've got this little joint over here, um, which I'll explain why that's there in a bit. All right, I forgot to explain this, so let me quickly try to make sense of it. Basically, I have to manually move the ducks and geese into this habitat by transporting them from one place to another. But if I do that while the geese habitat is inside of the giraffe habitat, it will instead just try to transport them to the giraffe habitat. So I had to make this little cutout that isn't part of the giraffe habitat so that I could put the geese and ducks down on this little bit of land without them being transported to the giraffe habitat, if that makes sense. Um, but we have the geese walking around the shore, but they don't walk into the habitat. Now, why is that? Because I've got a separate, oops, separate geese habitat over here called goose. And yeah, that is kind of keeping the geese contained in this little area over here. Uh, and both the geese and the duck. Now for... As far as the ducks go, yeah, I do think I want to change something that makes the ducks stay in maybe this sort of area. I kind of have to figure that out, how I'm going to do that. Uh, maybe a separate 
duck habitat inside the geese habitat. I'm not sure yet, but um, yeah, the habitat gate of the goose habitat is over here, hidden underground next to the gorillas. And um, what's kind of special over here, if you open the barrier menu, is that I just made the giraffe habitat barrier go underneath the goose habitat barrier. And that allowed me to kind of interlock these habitats together. And the game does not really count any animals as escaped. Um, which even though they don't escape anymore because we have it disabled, it would cause them to get boxed up otherwise. Um, but no, this just works. Uh, the geese stay over here. The giraffe and all other animals are still able to get into that area. And yeah, it all just functions the way I want it to. Except for the ducks. <laughs> so yeah, if you want to have animals confined to a certain space of a habitat or have multiple habitats inside each other, just have barriers go underneath each other and you can just kind of do whatever you want, uh, which is really freaking cool. So that's about it. There's a couple of other spots I added geese, but it's not really that important. Um, couple of yeah a couple of small updates and some big things not really any buildings because we yeah it's a lot of nature um, I've also kind of laid out where the car safari is mostly going to be even though I plastered it full with trees but yeah this kind of fence over here is the outer edge of the zoo and the car right is all of this sand um, even though we're not going to be working on that for a while it was nice to have that laid out while I was laying out all this other stuff, like the electric wires, these fences, stuff like that. So yeah, yaks, black buck, seals or sea lions, seal lions, <laughs> as you could say, um, are all these awesome new additions and the ducks and the geese and everything I'm super happy with. And yeah, just look at how this area is coming together now. It's starting to look a lot more finished, which is just super, super cool kind of should record a new intro now with all this awesome new nature uh, but let's see if we can find a seal real quick just get get that seal camera going so thank you guys for watching it was good to have a little catching up uh, I hope you guys enjoyed what you saw today um, I've, I'm just trying to think if I missed any mods but no the rest of the mods I think are all stuff that we already had like the uh, Water bugs, the blue wildebeest, stuff like that. The dick dick is also in. But yeah, we've all seen those uh, before. So yeah, if you download the zoo again, um, I'm, I am going to update the zoo file for this episode. So if you download it, make sure you have all of these mods downloaded. There will be a list of them on the workshop page, so you'll know what to download. But um, that is going to be it from me today. Um, I'll see you guys in the next episode and um, bye bye.